dad. Case closed and Mitch is on his way to prison. Daryl's recovering just fine and Connie's giving him private judo lessons. Hulk agreed to pay for the damages to the pharmacy and Hal got his scholarship. Today, Aunt Eloise got a letter from a friend. Something about a television station in Death Threats. Sounds like another case for Nancy Drew. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Love, Nancy. I need something to I make this our work. Miss Snoop has shown up. Why did you ask me to come here? You see, I've been doing my own investigation, and I kept on finding more and more things until... until I got a threatening letter yesterday. Can I see it? Do you still have it? Now do you believe me? Who could be doing this? You must know. It has to be Dwayne. Dwayne Powers? But why on earth would he... Dwayne is a very dangerous individual, ready to risk lives to accomplish his deadly campaign against Rick. Once we catch him in the act, the safer we'll all be. That is correct, Ms. Drew. And now for the bonus round. Name the washed-up director and interfering actress who will be dead in a matter of minutes. Hurry up, contestants. Time's running out. It's him! Up in the control room! And he's locked us in! Lillian, hide! Why, hello, Ms. Drew. I only followed Lillian here, but I've trapped both of you. Your death will make a wonderful end to Act One. Rick Arlen's death will be the climax to this little soap opera I've produced. I'm calling it One Death to Die. Dwayne, this isn't a soap opera. You're dealing with real people. Real life is a soap opera. You'll learn that. Or rather, you would have learned that had you lived. Maddie still cares for you. You're making a big mistake. Enough! Words, words, words! You will soon see that I am a man of action. I'll come down for the final close-up. I'm gonna write you two out of the script forever! So sorry about your short-lived career, Miss Drew. trial for his attempted murder and has publicly apologized for his crime. Lillian has moved out to California and is directing her first film. But the best news is about Maddie and Rick. They finally decided to tie the knot. Well, as Serena and Roy. But who knows? Perhaps it'll rub off on them. There's always hope. Love, Nancy. It's missing an eye. It's stuck. Gold! 
And to think I was standing on it all along. <laughs> Too bad no one will ever find out about it. Lewis? I knew it. There must be over a million dollars in here. I've got to stop him before he gets away. with my renovation work and counting out all of those gold coins. Lewis was behind all of the accidents, hoping to pressure Rose into selling the house so he could find the treasure himself. Although Rose and Abby may not have a legal right to the gold, the bank the coins were stolen from will still give them a reward for finding it. The house also has gotten a lot of publicity with all of the news stories, and the place is booked solid for the first month of its opening. I guess a haunted bed and breakfast with hidden treasures is all the rage these days. Even if there are no such things as ghosts. Uh, I think. See you soon, Nancy. You look at that sparkly rock, and me without my sunglasses. Hi, Lisa. How did you get in here? I followed you, of course. Turns out a nosy, goody-two-shoes detective is good to have around after all. Now, why don't you toss me that big honkin' diamond so I can blow this popsicle stand and never set foot in Lamo, Wisconsin again? Lisa, you must be kidding me. This diamond belongs in a museum in France. Yeah? Well, I belong in the lap of luxury. And that diamond's gonna get me there. Hasn't anybody ever told you to mind your own business? Oh, many times. Well, maybe this time you'll learn. My eyes! Don't worry. My spicy devil villain venom won't last for long, but I'm afraid by the time you get your eyes back, you'll have missed my grand exit. <coughs> so you're the one who trapped me in the elevator. Ooh, you are a smarty pants. But let's not forget about your little frostbite incident. I'm the rotten friend who locked you outside too, you know. Just trying to keep you on your toes, Nancy. Didn't want you to get soft on your vacation. Are you the one who caught me on the head in the locker room? Ouch. <laughs> I bet that hurt. But I had to get the medallion somehow, didn't I? I hope we can still be friends. Why did you leave Jacques' medallion in Hotchkiss's room? <coughs> and Hotchkiss's medallion out in the shed? To spread suspicion around, of course. You know, to play with your mind. Plus, I was at a dead end. I got the two messages from the stained glass window, but then what? I knew you would figure it out, so I decided to put the medallions in your hands and let you lead the way. Why are you doing this? <coughs> Haven't you heard? It's a material world, sister, and I am a material girl. Photojournalism pays peanuts, you know, and who wants to work for a living anyway? I was made for a tropical climate, lounge chairs and cabana boys. Why did you have to vandalize that beautiful library? Just a little translation mix-up. When I read the message from Hotchkiss's medallion, I thought it meant Diamond of Misery in the library. Whoops, <laughs> guess I went a little overboard looking for it in there. Anyway, enough with the questions, Nancy. You'll just have to read the rest in the papers. I gotta stop her. Dear 
your dad to think I almost became friends with a diamond thief. Everyone at Wickford Castle is resting easier now that Marie Antoinette's journal and her famous diamond are safe and sound. The journal, the diamond, and the medallions are all going to be featured in a new Marie Antoinette exhibit in Paris. And it looks like everyone will be rewarded. <laughs> Except Lisa, of course. First, she missed her plane to Rio. And now she's going to be charged with attempted grand theft. Professor Hodgkiss is thrilled because the French government has granted her permission to publish Marie's journal in the U.S. before it gets returned to France. This ought to help prove her theory about Marie's character once and for all. Thanks to Jacques and his great-grandfather's efforts to find the journal, the Brunet name is being celebrated all over France. In the meantime, Jacques and Isabelle have eloped. It's so romantic. I showed Dexter the poem that Ezra Wickford wrote in, and he was relieved to know that his old pop didn't carry any hard feelings to his grave. All the talk shows want Dexter to tell his story on national television, but he keeps turning them down. I guess he doesn't want to be famous or infamous. But when Christy Lane called and asked Dexter to be her business partner, he accepted. With her business sense and Dexter's expert knowledge of the castle, I think they'll make a great team. So, you know what they say, Dad. Il n'est jamais trop tard de changer l'histoire. It's never too late to change history. Me, I'm determined to go out and enjoy this snow before some other case comes up. See you soon. couldn't pull this off. Not so fast, Detective. Joseph, please let me pass. I can't let you do this, Nancy. I'm warning you, I still got a trick or two up my sleeve. We're going down in a blaze of glory. Joseph, you can go down in a blaze of glory if you want, but Maya and I are not coming with you. You've cracked your last case. Joseph, this is far from over. Now step aside. It's all over now. We've still got time for a grand finale here, Joseph. I never meant for it to turn out this way. Joseph, sweet old Joseph, was Maya's kidnapper. He says he planned to kidnap Brady with the idea that Simone could use her Hollywood connections to save the theater. But when Maya entered the dressing room, he panicked and grabbed her instead. Plan B was to stall the demolition long enough for the Historical Society to declare the building an official landmark. I guess he's been at the Royal Palladium for so long, he just couldn't imagine his life without it. But desperation aside, Poor Joseph wasn't cut out for a life of crime, and pretty soon things were spinning out of his control. Simone's publicity stunts didn't help. At least he was courteous and kind to Maya through the whole thing. Her testimony should help him in court. The good news is that the Royal Palladium is still standing. Once he heard that Nicholas would inherit his grandmother Louisa's 50% of the theater, Brady decided he'd better find another site for Planet Tinseltown. In order to make amends for things, and because he needed some good publicity, Brady donated his half of the theater to the St. Louis Historical Society. Together with Haddit, they should have this place restored to its original glory in no time. Not such a happy ending for Simone, I'm afraid. She received an official reprimand from the National Press Corps for her stunt with the wreath. Still, knowing Simone, she'll be back at the top of her game in no time. So, 
Here ends the longest three days of my life. The premiere of Vanishing Destiny is back on. But I think this detective is going to wait for it to come out on videotape. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy.